Hello and welcome to the CA Ops MBS Best Practices video series. My name is Dave Gorsick from the CA Ops MBS team and this video will provide you with a high level overview of the many CA Ops MBS OpsRex functions that are available within your automated applications. It is part of the OpsRex function series of videos. This short video will provide a basic introduction to the built-in functions of CA Ops MVS, providing you with an overview of their functionality. Included will be a list of the commonly used functions that are available, as well as a general coding outline that is needed to construct all function calls within your automation. In a nutshell, ZOS automation involves reacting to system events from messages and commands to time of day events, and then performing a wide range of system tasks. Tasks such as issuing alert WTOs or messages, initiating system or database commands, sending emails, and much more. Obtaining specific system or ACID related data, such as the name of the system or sysplex, determining the step name of a particular job, to querying the status of a system DASI volume is critical in the decision making logic within your automation. This video provides an overview of the CA Ops MBS built-in functions and how they can be used to obtain some of this critical system data. CA Ops MBS OpsRex functions are a key component of the product. They are more effective than issuing the equivalent ZOS command and in many cases retrieve data in which no ZOS command exists. The primary reason that makes the functions more efficient is that they can obtain the desired system data synchronously. For example, if you are processing a critical system event within an Ops MBS message rule and you need to determine if a particular STC or batch job is active, using the Ops status function, as soon you will see, will allow the logic of the rule to immediately obtain the status information. This in contrast to the logic of the rule having to invoke an asynchronous OpsRex program that could possibly run seconds or longer after the event and whose logic would need to issue the ZOS display active job name command and extract and manipulate the output. All functions have required and optional arguments and the return to output will be dependent on the function and the arguments that are being passed. Most of these functions can be used in both Ops MBS rules and OpsRex programs. As you'll find within the CA Ops MBS documentation, there are approximately 50 Ops MBS built-in functions. From obtaining and performing automatic restart management services via the Ops ARM and Ops status functions, to querying system devices such as DASI and tape volumes via the Ops dev function, you'll find a wide variety of data performed by these Ops MBS functions. Ops CA7 function to issue commands to CA7. Ops CPF function to obtain command character prefixes needed to dynamically issue commands to subsystems. Continuing on, functions to DOM or low light highlighted WTO messages that were issued from within your automation via the Ops DOM function. Serializing the execution of a program on a local system or within a sysplex using the ops nq function, accessing IPL related information by invoking the ops IPL function, querying JES2 initiator and line data via the ops JES2 function, obtaining the contents of a specific member in the logical parmline concatenation via the ops parmline function, gathering ACID information such as its job number, user ID, type and status, CPU time as well as obtaining a WTOR associated to an ACID with the Ops status function, dynamically creating and then submitting batch job JCL on the fly by constructing the Ops submit function, utilizing the Ops thresh function to implement threshold or throttle logic, preventing automated actions within a rule from reoccurring when the triggering event is being issued repeatedly. Manipulating vSAM files by accessing the Ops vSAM function to querying sysplex related information from the Ops sysplex function. Again, there are many different Ops MBS Ops Rex functions available that can be invoked to obtain the system related data 
you need in order to make effective logical decisions within your automated applications. You will find the complete list of the functions within the Commands and Functions Manual of the CA Ops MVS documentation. Just like TSOE Rex functions, Ops Rex functions have a standard coding syntax. A user-defined simple variable name is needed to call or invoke the function. The name of this variable should reflect the type of data in which the function is obtaining. For example, if the op status function is being used to obtain all active ACIDs, a variable name of all underscore ACIDs or active underscore ACIDs would logically identify this return data. The function name, of course, would be that of the specific opsrex function. All functions are invoked with a required argument or arguments, as well as optional arguments depending on the function that is utilized. Again, complete details of all opsrex functions, including purpose, syntax, and coding samples can be found in the command reference manual of the OpsMBS documentation. Let's now take a look at a few coding examples taken from some OpsMBS automated applications. This particular code is utilizing the OpsStatus function to determine if a job or address space is active. Note the calling variable name of active, which will contain the return data from the OpsStatus function. Within the OpsStatus function, you can see three arguments are being passed or requested from this function. The first argument, an A value, is specifying that an address space is to be queried. The second argument is requesting the type of information that is to be obtained about the address space. In this case, the A subfunction argument indicates that the op status function should only obtain the active count or number of the specific address space being queried. The last argument is the name of the address space. Based on the obtained op status function data, the active variable would be set to zero if the specified CICS ASPL ACID is not active or would be set to one or more depending on the number of active ACIDs found for this job name. The logic would process the active variable value accordingly and either start the address space or exit. Within the logic of this automated OpsMBS application, the ops clear EDQ function is used to clean out any data that may be left in the external data queue left by previous logic. This of course is needed to wipe the EDQ clean so that subsequent functions or commands can return data to a clean queue or notepad. In this case, the ops yes2 function is being used to obtain all active class A initiators. The initiator data that is returned to the EDQ is then manipulated to obtain the active jobs in each initiator. Using this information, the op status function is then used to determine how long the job has been executing. Thus, a group of functions are being invoked in this code to create an effective OpsMVS automated application. In this case, an application to cancel batch jobs that run in an initiator over the allotted execution time frame. This final coding example is demonstrating how the opsThresh function can be used to implement threshold logic within a rule. Like all functions, the opsThresh function can be passed different arguments to handle different requests. Firing on the IEC 606i VTOC ear event in this sample, the opsThresh function is coded to create a threshold check against a particular text within the message. In this case, the device that is causing the error. If this is the first issuance of the IEC 606i event containing this particular device in a 10 minute window, the logic will dispatch an OpsRex program to perform subsequent processing logic. Thank you for viewing this video. For complete OpsRex function details, as well as learning more about OpsMBS, refer to the OpsMBS documentation set. Additionally, to connect with other users, and share your own expertise, visit the event management and automation community.